So we're now going to look at structure determination using a combination of spectroscopic techniques. And this topic is covered in the molecular characterization chapter, which is chapter number 12. The first thing we're going to look at is a method for analyzing the different types of spectra. In step one, we're going to look at the mass spectrum and we're going to use the mass spectrum to help us to determine the relative molecular mass of the unknown compound. In step two, we're going to use the infrared spectrum to help us to identify functional groups that are present. In step three, we're going to use the 1H NMR spectrum to determine the types of CH, CH2 and or CH3 groups that are present in the molecule and help us to identify partial structures or fragments in step four, we're going to be using the 13C NMR spectrum to determine the number of carbon atoms that are in different environments. And we're going to make certain that the carbon atoms are consistent with the partial structures that we identified from step three. Step five, if there's more than one structure still being possible, then we can use intense fragment ions in the mass spectrum to identify partial structures. And then finally, and very importantly, at the very end, we're going to double check that the proposed structure is consistent with all the spectra, the mass spectrum, the infrared spectrum, the 1H NMR spectrum, and the 13C NMR spectrum. So let's now have a look at an example. And uh, we're going to analyze first the mass spectrum. And in step one, we're going to look at the mass spectrum to help us to determine the relative molecular mass. So we're looking at the peak here with highest M over Z value, and that's at 72. And we're going to now make the assumption that that MZ72 is consistent with a relative, relative molecular mass of 72. In step two, we're now going to look at the infrared spectrum of the unknown molecule. And we're going to look at the most intense absorption bands within the infrared spectrum. And here we see a very intense and very broad band at around 3,300, which is consistent with either an alcohol or an amine, an OH or an NH bond. We've got these CH um, stretching frequencies around here. Also, really importantly and distinctively, is a peak around 1640, and that's consistent with the CC double bond in an alkene. So we've got these possible functional groups that we've identified from the infrared spectrum. We're now going to move on to the 1H NMR spectrum, and we're going to consider the different signals that we have in the NMR spectrum. And we'll start at the high end, first of all, these signals here between 5 and 6 ppm, the relative ratio of 1 to 2 in terms of the integration curves. And this is consistent with the terminal alkene, CC double bond at the end of the chain. One hydrogen atom in the alkene, and this signal here for two hydrogens at the end of the alkene chain. This signal around about um, 3.5 is consistent with a CH2 next to an alcohol group. So that chemical shift now allows us to assign an OH group being adjacent to the CH2. A signal around about 2.3, which is a, a quartet as we can see here, is consistent with a CH2 being adjacent to an alkene. And then finally, we've got this very broad signal here, which integrates approximately to one hydrogen. And we can link this to the OH group present in an alcohol. So from analysis of the 1H NMR spectrum, we can identify the CH2OH group being present and this terminal alkene with the CH2 group being adjacent to the double bond. In step four, we can just double check those assignments thing to be aware of is this signal around 77 ppm, and this is due to the solvent. We have two signals um, around the 130, 140 uh, to 120 mark ppm, and these are due to the alkene. We have a lower signal here for the CH2, but this is consistent with the CH2 next to an alcohol. And then the lowest signal of all, which is this one here, is consistent with a carbon atom and a CH2 adjacent to an alkene. So indeed, 
the 13 CNMR spectrum is consistent with these two fragments. We'll now look again at the mass spectrum and just see if we can get some information from any fragment ions, and indeed we can. We've got an intense fragment ion at around 31, and we can identify from that that this ion is responsible for the M over Z value of 31, which again is consistent with the CH2OH group being present in our unknown molecule. So when we put all of that information together, what we come up with for our unknown molecule is 3-butene-1-ol, which has got this structure here with an OH group at one end of the carbon chain and the alkene at the other end. In terms of key information that we glean from the different types of spectra, from the mass spectrum, we've got a relative molecular mass of 72, which is consistent with the molecule of formula C4H8O. In the carbon spectrum, for example, we identified the presence of the alkene carbon atoms at 135 and 118 ppm. This is confirmed in the proton, or the 1H NMR spectrum, where we've got the signals for these three alkenic hydrogens, 5.8, 5.1. The 1H NMR spectrum also allowed us to identify this CH2 group here, which is adjacent to the OH group. We had a triplet signal at 3.7. And finally, the infrared spectrum allowed us to identify the presence of OH group, for example, this broad absorption around 3,300 per centimetre.